Welcome back to Otaku No Video. As always, thank you very much for joining me, where today I am talking about Gargantia of the Vergerous Planet, as you can tell down there. This is a mecha anime series from a couple of years ago, as of the time I'm making this review. And as always, it'll be a spoiler-free review. It's an unusual anime in some senses, in that it very much lives and dies based on how much you self-identify with the main character or if not identify, at least appreciate what he is going through. The main character you can see back there, I think, oh, back there, is, uh, is Leto, which it, who is a soldier in a far-flung war in the future. He pilots a giant robot, as you do, and he fights in this war against these savage aliens. And this is all episode one stuff. He ends up... Um, essentially thrown through a wormhole and ends up in this sort of pastoral um, water world that is very much like old earth, except it's not at all um, civilizationally or culturally the way um, old earth used to be. Um, people live on these giant floating cities, basically these, these uh, metal ships that have been retrofitted to all sail together in these fleets. And that's where everyone lives. And, uh, have very simple pastoral lives of fishing and salvage and things like that. And so very very quickly and immediately the idea is that Leto suddenly has no war to fight. And he has been literally born and bred to fight in this war. And so he quickly struggles with this question of what his purpose is. And the show does a very interesting job of making Leto a rather unemotional person, or if, unem if unemotional, um, a, somebody bred for one thing, to be a soldier. So he has very specific things he knows to do and needs to do, um, and he doesn't really know how to behave outside of that. He's never had a reason to live and do things outside of his duties as a soldier. Now, again, this is one of those things where you have to appreciate what this character is going through to really um, get involved and invested in the story. Um, but that's the, the basic concept of the show. Uh, fortunately, it's got this lovely animation by, I believe it's Production IG, um, and they do this, this beautiful job of animating... Uh, the characters and the environments. The mecha are all CGI, but they're seamlessly blended in. And actually making those CGI turns out to be a very wise move. The mecha are supposed to be very different and alien. They're supposed to be their own thing, um, something that is is very much not human. Um, and one of the things I really liked about the show um, is that they thought through a lot of their science fictional premises. Um, a lot of mecha series are short on thinking through things and long on just giving you lots of action. And while that's fine, Gargantia gives you a... Um, it feels more like a like a, uh, a Golden Age science fiction novel, something by Asimov um, or Arthur C. Clarke, where, uh, or Stanislaw Lem, where characters are thrown into this very unusual situation. They have to figure out how they should behave in relation to it. And I really like that a lot. Um, I thought it was handled quite well. Uh, now, as I as I said, uh, a lot of this will live and die on your on your appreciation of the characters. Um, there's also a number of, of female characters that Leto quickly gets involved with, including some uh, message delivery girls. One in particular. Now, here's why I have to bring up something that's a little weird about the show. Um, the characters live on this apparently f temperate to mild tropical world, or in, it's where the, the ships are, and the girls all wear, you can kind of see them there in the background, um, they all wear these midriff-bearing, leg-bearing outfits, and all the guys wear long sleeve shirts and long sleeve, and like jeans, and completely cover every part of their body, and I can think of only one female character who is not wearing this very kind of revealing outfit, and it just seems weird. Um, I mean, I, obviously it's fan service, but it is so ubiquitous, it just comes across as very obviously fan service in a way that just seems um, out of place. Uh, moreover, there is a, an infamous belly dancing sequence uh, early in the show that just kind of comes out of nowhere and it's like, oh, the characters are doing this now. Why? 
Um, it's obviously fan service. So there are a few moments like that in the show. Uh, fortunately, the characters are not particularly sexualized beyond their, you know, their, their form and, and bodies. So there aren't a lot of, you know, um, ridiculous butt shots and panty flashes. There are a couple of them uh, throughout the course of the series. But in general, the, the characters are, are not sexualized, and they don't have particularly um, uh, physical or romantic attractions between uh, most of the characters, and the romantic relationships are uh, appropriately quiet, where, you know, they're not jumping at each other, but they're not trying to hide their feelings either necessarily. They just don't quite know how to um, how to approach each other about these topics. And it's only 13 episodes long, because it's only so much time to do that. Actually, I think it's only 12. Um, so that's kind of how you have to, you know, deal, or that's something you have to deal with in the show. Um, the setting itself, as I mentioned before, is quite well thought out. There are some weird idiosyncrasies and things like that, and the mecha are just kind of all-powerful in a lot of things they can do. But, like a lot of good science fiction, there are rules to how things work, and different things work at different power levels, and it's once they establish what things can do, they don't suddenly give things new abilities halfway through the show, and I, that was, was kind of nice. This feels like a more grown-up mecha series than a lot of them that you might be uh, used to. Now, I listened to, or I watched this with the English dub, and I want to commend the English dubbers for their work here, particularly with uh, Leto having to be distant, not unemotional, but distant and shut off, and very deliberately. I mean, he's in this very weird environment, and he doesn't know what they're going to do, how they're going to react to him. Um, but also in the voice of the Mecca, which is voiced by Matt Mercer, I believe, and because um, the Mecca has to have this cool and, and um, equally detached personality. And so often people do that by having a very simple and robotic voice, or at least a voice that is very, uh, if, if not monotone, then is just very simple. And with this, the idea is it's hundreds of years in the future. So, of course, the AI can handle full intonation and inflection. It just never gets emotional. It just never gets... Um, it never really speeds up or slow down. It just talks like this the whole time. And it has these very logical uh, beliefs, and it just says these things. Much like Spock, for example, on original Star Trek, where you know he doesn't speak in a monotone all the time, but he's just measured all the time. I think they did a nice job of that. Um, overall, I, I thought the uh, English dub was certainly completely workable. I also listened to it in Japanese dub for the last couple episodes, and that seemed fine too. No issues either way with any of the dubs, so just FYI. Um, but yeah, in general, um, yeah, it, this is definitely an interesting show, and with only 12 episodes, this, that actually turns out to be to the benefit of the show. It is a better show for being uh, brief, because it can get through its story, get to its ending, and kind of develop its characters um, in a way that I think if this had been 26 or 50 episodes, it would have dragged, it would have been more... Um, uh, battles of the week. You would have had more characters, which would have been nice, but this already is pretty chock full of characters. This is a pretty large cast for a 12 episode show. So good on them there. And overall, I was pretty impressed. You know, I think you might not get into the show depending on how you feel about Leto and how about the, and kind of the fan service and just the, the very sci fi ish nature of the show. This is a very, this is a more high concept science fiction show than a lot of other mecha series where it's just, you know, oh, aliens are attacking, climbing a giant robot, and just fend them off every episode. Um, so that's not going to be everyone's cup of tea, but I think if that is, definitely Gargantia is a well-produced, carefully um, um, thought out, I keep using that phrase, but you know what I mean, anime series.